when you talk to people about the best set of all time, a few names get tossed around, and I think none of them are incorrect, but some might surprise you, but others won't. There is almost never a surprise whenever its name gets mentioned, and it's probably the set that really did change TFT. Although it might not be my personal favourite, I understand how good it is, and I understand how important this set was for TFT, and how it changed the trajectory of the game as a whole. The obvious reason why set 6 has succeeded is the fact that augments were introduced, and augments really need no introduction, do they? I mean, over the years, Riot has tried to improve the auto battler genre. The fundamental issue that auto battlers have, they are incredibly boring to play after you've played a couple hundred games, because you're not constantly practicing mechanics, the strategy only goes so deep before you start hitting a point where things feel kind of the same. So without some level of novelty, player drop-offs happen pretty quickly, and you know, the next set waiting room is a feature that we all know and we've all said at one point in our lives. I mean, even now I'm set 12 waiting room. They had tried shadow items, radiant items, universes, and hexes. And of course the chosen mechanic, that all changed with set 6. And I don't know which Megamind genius at Riot HQ said, wait a minute, what if we just do Slay the Spire? Because that, that one concept has probably saved TFT from a gradual decline. But of course, the elephant in the room of why set 6 probably had the most exposure than any other set, and it's because Arcane was released at the same time which even my family was talking about. Now this has happened since with One Piece, but talking to my family about League of Legends that wasn't me defending my decision to play games all day, kind of felt a bit weird when my parents were like, oh, you know, that Vi character's pretty cool. Is this the game that you've been playing all this time? I'm like, what's going on here, man? And to this day, that still feels weird that that happened. I do have to say, Arcane is probably the greatest thing that ever happened to League in terms of public exposure. You day to day saw Reddit posts of new players looking to get into the game because of Arcane, and I bet a huge chunk of them tried regular League, absolutely hated it, and then tried TFT and was like, okay, this is much less suffering. But Arcane can only get you so far, right? A game needs a little bit more than a fancy bit of marketing, it actually needs to be good. And that's where set six truly, truly knocked it out of the park. The thematic was amazing. The trait webs were great. You could play vertical, you could play flexibly, you could do almost, you felt like you could almost do anything if you had the right augments. And you even had fantasies. You had big units in Colossus and a summoning unit that ended up being a bloody dragon. People loved this stuff. You really felt like you were playing an arcane auto battler, and at the time, obviously, you're going in week to week, you're watching arcane, you come back and you, you play more games of League, and you're like, oh yeah, I really feel like Jinx is unhinged, I really feel like Jace is cool. You know, it was just that you felt like you were actually controlling the units from Arcane, and that to me is a very powerful fantasy. I mean, the only person I think maybe some people show with was Victor, but because he wasn't quite his human form like we saw on the, the TV show, but that's okay. Oh, and uh, Vi and was cool, but Caitlyn, well, we've seen Caitlyn in that form pretty much every set since the inception. And it wasn't just Piltover that was represented, there was Zorn and Echo, and they really knocked that one out of the park. But I personally would love to have seen a set 2 reprint of Singed in this one, not flinging, but whatever. And then you had also things like Mutant, which gave different effects game to game. And I don't think we had seen anything like Mutant until this point. I could be absolutely wrong here, but, you know, it was cool that you could go in and, you know, there was Cho'Gath reroll that was pretty cool. Uh, and, like, it kind of felt cool that you could play, have so many different strategies going in and you know Cho'Gath was awesome if you got him in stage one you knew you were gonna have a great game and then you had Syndicate Akali and re-roll Assassins but this is what I mean you you also had Challenger which is kind of similar to Blademaster right and 
You could play these things. You could play Assassin vertically. You could play Challengers vertically. You could even had Yordles. Everyone loves Yordles. How many times do you see on Reddit? I love playing with Yordles because people like cute little tiny things that do a lot of damage. And then of course, there was the final bit and that was the Easter egg of Vega. It was these little details in set six that really elevated it from previous sets. Those little nuggets that people just weren't expecting and just appeared randomly without reason or you know there was a reason obviously but it just felt like there was so many things to explore because something might just pop out that you had no idea about it just was a little bit more novel than set 5 or 5.5 ever was sex six also contained probably my favorite champion of all time and that was tom kench like the cool thing about Tom Kench is that you could feed him other units and that scaled with their star levels. So there's some interesting strategies where you would three star like a one cost and then as soon as you hit the Tom Kench, you fed the one cost and he just got a huge amount of stats. It was such a cool way to play and it was just something, it really epitomized how much effort and care went into this set. You had something like Tom Kench who just felt amazing to use because you could do so many wonky strategies with. He was a champion with almost limitless potential. This might be a bit of a controversial take, but I quite like Socialite, and I know they had its problems, like it was bugged with its Orgman, and there was Socialite Kaiser, but it also facilitated a lot of niche builds. I mean, if you look at YouTube, so many people farm content from Socialite, and it was one of those things that it gave you an interesting thing to do. It's like, oh, what unit can I buff up with Socialite to make it overpowered and strong? It was just one of those inclusions, again, it just added depth, it added novelty and variety and allowed you to chase things you otherwise wouldn't normally chase. Adding to the fantasies, there was also this really funny build called Clapio, which basically was Galio 4 AD because he had the highest based AD in the game. And he basically just walked around clapping people. It was hilarious. I mean, it did get nerfed into the ground, but man, it was so much fun. Adding these all together, you had Colossus again, like, which is awesome. It's like the precursor to dragons. And I know that might be another controversial opinion, but I think dragons were cool. You felt good picking them because they felt they were strong. And you felt like you had like unlimited usage out of them. I mean, Scion could knock up a whole bloody board. And I might be joining some dots here, but Innovator was removed in 6.5, and 6.5 was nowhere near the same level of success as 6 was. Um, is there any reason as to why that is? I mean, people really like summoning units, don't they? And of course, there was Mercenary, which to this day, people still say is the best econ trait TFT has ever had, but I'm pretty sure those people just like spinning wheels and would lose themselves at a slot machine. I mean, there were some horrible moments through the set, things like Enforcer being incredibly frustrating to play against, Yumi just existing, and Broken Stopwatch being, well, broken. But this is also when Riot started implementing Double Up, and while the general population might not play much double up these days and just generally through the years there are a huge huge amount of people that play double up because well they actually have friends that like to play tft you know and this is at a point when people were still kind of pandemic oriented like it's two years after the pandemic so there's still that knock-on effect people working from home like, there's just generally a lot more people that are actively involved in TFT, not like now. Most of my friends these days, they have kids, houses and careers like regular humans. And they don't spend all their days dragging make-believe characters on a board and watching them fight like I do. And being able to play with your friends is actually infinitely more casual, so it actually taps into the casual friendly market. and. I'm gonna be real with you, 9 out of 10 people, maybe 99 out of 100 people, are not ladder warriors. They're just regular guys that play TFT for fun, like, like they should. 
despite its hiccups, is highly regarded as the best set we've ever had, and it's truly not hard to see why. Having big impactful units, strong summonings, powerful assassins, all in a well executed, thematically consistent package, with the advent of augments providing a huge amount of depth, it gave us a little something for everyone. You really, really felt like you were playing a whole new game compared to the last five sets. It was also made at a time when Riot's monetization methods weren't awful. The free passes gave a ton of rewards and the paid ones actually felt like they were worth buying. There were no $500 chibi gachas, just eggs and purchasable little legends. It was a time where TFT really felt accessible, that it was deep but still kind of player friendly, like especially for new players. You didn't feel that when you're going into it, it's like, overwhelming how complicated everything was and all the interactions and everything but it was still skill expressive and with the right skills you'd succeed and do well and get into high elo it was the right balance at the right time with the best theme it wasn't a set that was founded in hubris like set 5 was or a set that tried to overextend itself with horrible mechanics it was a set that felt it was loved in its creation and that they really put their time into it. The Riot really loved making this set and it was the, the set that they wanted us to remember forever. And I think we will. Well,